Today guys, we're just gonna do a real simple video. I'm gonna sharpen a bunch of different types of knives on the sharpening rods and, you know, just hang out. So, that's pretty much all we're doing. Start off with a Santoku here. Yeah, it's dull. It's got some chips in it. So we'll start off on the diamond. Yeah, that's pretty good. One down. Next, we got a uh, K-Bar Keffert BK-62. Again, no edge. So we're gonna start on the diamond. This is uh, 1095 carbon steel. And I'm gonna start out with some a little bit heavier strokes. bit more pressure than usual. Alright, so this one, I don't know that the angle's quite right. So we're going to check it. Because these rods are set up 30 degrees and it's shown up on one side but not quite like I would expect it to on the other and to be fair I did expect this to be a little bit wider than 30 degrees it is a uh, bushcraft knife so they like to make those a little wider to make them a little tougher Yeah, so it's really only getting to one side here. 
Maybe if I... I don't think they ground... I don't, don't know that they, these sides are ground evenly. They are not. They are different angles. <laughs> That's alright. We're just gonna realign them to the same. It's possible I may need to break out my DMT guided alignment set for this. Yeah, we're gonna have to do the guided alignment set for that one. Wasn't actually planning on doing any of this. But, you know, I got it handy. I center it about in the middle there. Make sure it's got a nice tight grip. I'm going to remark the edge here. In hindsight, I should have wiped the steel dust off first. set too high. Kind of broadens a little bit towards the tip, which actually is not a bad feature for especially for this kind of knife. But that should do it. better. You want to keep going with the next grit until you see all the larger scratches from the coarser grit have been uh, marked out. Now, this isn't really going to be a, a proper tutorial of the DMT guided alignment sharpener here. Otherwise I'd be showing you close-ups and trying to get you an idea of what the grain would look like. Really we're just doing this for fun. If you are interested in doing me doing a full tutorial, yeah, let me know in the comments. Certainly there are a lot of uh, tutorials on guided systems like this already, and most of them are honestly function fairly similarly. Um, I don't know that, I haven't seen any for this particular system, but I think the uh, general principles are the same. So gonna have to switch back to the course here because I just noticed I'm missing a section at the tip on the reverse side here. You 
you have seen me do some circular motion techniques on here. And if you've seen AG's video on the circular motion technique, it does remove too much material, uh, typically in one spot. So you want wider circles, and obviously you only do it when you're trying to remove a lot of material. In this case, I am to some degree reshaping the edge a little bit, so I am trying to remove a lot of material. But if you were just touching up a knife that you'd already done, uh, no reason to use the circular motion really. But in this particular case, it works well for removing material pretty quickly. Preferably you're using smooth, long strokes. And you can do it in sections. But just make sure those sections overlap a little bit so that you're never getting ridges in your edge there. The metal tends to get a lot of overlap because you're overlapping from the hill heel and you're overlapping from the tip so the middle ends up getting a lot so i typically focus on the heel and the tip and then just the overlap that hits the middle just is the part that hits the middle and i don't focus the middle at all typically unless there's a chip doesn't actually feel particularly sharp. But it's doing good, it's got a nice toothy edge. I think uh, normally I would finish it up on ceramic sticks. But uh, for this particular knife, I think I'll leave it fairly toothy. Give it a quick one more wipe down. And we'll give it a quick strap here. I am doing kind of a fast and dirty sh uh, sharpening on all of these, really. I'm not putting in crazy efforts and trying to get perfect results. This isn't my best strap. It's got gaps and it's not quite flat. It's just slightly slightly wrong so but it's what I had had on hand at work my nicer stuff is at home as if I need something that really nice at work I just have the knife maker do it right <laughs> well, well we didn't really need them done I feel like doing them yeah What? Why is it tearing? Well, not quite certain. It looks okay. But apparently we didn't focus the middle quite enough. Okay. 
Good enough for my purposes. All right. Next step. Let's do a folder. It's got nothing. We're gonna go back to the diamond rods here. Again, we have one side that just isn't quite getting with the program here. reasonably well. Do some lighter strokes here. Just the weight of the knife. Tilt it back here because the thumb studs are getting in the way of the heel just a bit here. Which won't do the belly and tip super favors, so we're just gonna have to focus them individually a little bit. Yeah, pretty good. This side, this uh, obverse side is giving me way more resistance than the reverse side. Yeah, really nice here. I uh, will take it. Puts a lot of pressure on the hands. All right, so move that to the done pile. This guy, I believe, yeah, has finished his, I did this on diamonds earlier. We just gotta finish it up on ceramics here. Very nice, very nice. Wipe it down. I'm trying to keep my strap at least semi clean from particulates. Very good, very good. Yeah, we got a uh, folding chef's knife here. I believe it is completely dull. 
Yeah, it's got nothing. So we're gonna start out on the diamond again. This will be a VG10 steel. Nice Japanese steel, one of my favorite steels. Capable of a nice thin edge. And on this knife, it's a nice thin knife. It's, it's slicey once you sharpen it up. Yeah, it looks pretty good, except for the tip, or the heel here and the tip. You know, I would say that this edge, uh, the amount of work and care I've put into this one is probably less than some of these others. I would definitely say less. I've spent more time on the others, but it's so thin that already it's performing amazingly, even though I haven't really refined it that much. Oh, this is easily the best one of the bunch so far. All right, this guy. This one's got some serious chips in it. It's pretty, pretty significant for diamond rods. I'm gonna attempt the diamond rods, but I think I'm gonna end up switching to the DMT aligner sharpener. Because I think in the long run, it'll be easier to take off steel faster with the stones, especially since I can get that coarse grit. But I'm curious to see if we just do some pressure, how well these medium grit diamond rods will do. Now, normally you don't want to go, I mean, yeah, you, you definitely don't want to do too much pressure on, on diamonds in general because you don't want to scrape the diamonds off. But you also do need it to cut into the material. So to some degree, actually it did a really good job overall, but it's still got, Still got some chips in there. So, I think we will do the DMT aligner just because I think get a little coarser on there. And frankly, it's easier to put a little more pressure and focus on specific spots. It's got a funny swedge. So, we'll see how well this holds here. I'm actually just gonna give this just a smidgen of water. Or a lot of water, that's cool too. I'm just gonna soak the whole thing. You know, this sucker's probably gonna need 
It might be easier to get a pull through. With some tungsten carbide. Now that I've smoothed out the problem, it's less likely to catch on that V sharpener. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pause. Pause here. All right, so we tried the uh, coarse DMT and I don't think it's really making enough progress. So we're gonna try a tungsten carbide pull through. Pick one of these up for like 18 bucks. And uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna secure to my table or not. Yeah, it will. Yeah, you can't really see it though, can you? All right, so we're gonna try, you saw me try the uh, DMT course and I don't think it's making enough progress. So we're gonna try a tungsten carbide pull through. Normally don't suggest these because they take off way too much steel. But in this case, we're trying to take off way too much steel. So give it a try. Oh, that didn't work at all. Give it a little wet and see if that helps. All right, if that doesn't work, I actually brought an extra coarse DMT stone, which will work, but I'm trying to show you on the cheaper devices versus the $160 stone. Normally, you don't want to put too much pressure on this because it takes off too much steel. But again, I am trying to take off steel and I still need a little bit more, especially from the tip here. It's doing better, actually. I mean, there are still chips in there. They're better. But they're still there. I hate to give up, but... <laughs> I think I could get to it eventually with this. But I think the stone is going to be faster. I'll flip this to the extra coarse side here. Okay, I had to grab something that wouldn't slip. Tip is gone. It's not the pointiest tip, but it's going to have to do. Otherwise, I'll have to take a lot off. And I've already taken a lot off. Alright, we still got one ship in the middle to take care of. going to do for now we have the chips out of the blade you can see the angle is it's not all there you see it's different angle on the along the tip there or the belly there and my stonework isn't quite flawless yet I'm still working on that but we took away the parts that needed to be fixed and now we're just going to go back to the diamond rods Skipping between all sorts of sharpeners here. 
I was quite a bit off on this heel part for a section. And rather than go back to the coarse stone, we're just going to even it out on this pull through. I hate how often I'm saved by a pull through, but yeah, we're getting closer. Oh, okay, well, okay, this is rocking it. There we go. You can see this side is much more consistent than this side if you're looking at the, the lights there. Just about there. But yeah, there's still a section right here. Okay. I'm just gonna do some lighter strokes here. Kind of smooth out the Cuts in the, in the steel here, a little bit smoother. If you can turn the rods to a more worn area when you're doing your smoother strokes, you might get a little bit finer grain, depending on how broken your rods are. Looks pretty good. The tip is still off. All right. Still just a smidgen of hesitation. Just right at the start of the belly. Just a little hang up where I think the original chip was and it's just missing just a smidgen there. Just gotta bring it down. The blades with chips in them are the worst to sharpen by hand. Much easier to go to a uh, professional with a grinder or a sand belt. There we go, I think, we're, I think we've made good progress. Very good, very good. Don't have your sharpened blood blades touch other metal. Great way to chip them. All right, those are done. This one. Another one that is super dull. I don't think it's gonna cut anything. Nope. Hopefully this one, this one doesn't have any big chips in it. So I think it's gonna be a pretty quick fix. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're gonna do some lighter strokes here. Finish out the tip. And see where that's put us. Still pretty dull. All right, let's do heavier then.
I think that's just about good enough to move on to the ceramics. We're just gonna do some light strokes. And we'll do some heavier strokes with the ceramic. Kind of smoothed out the edge there so you can't really see the uh, strokes of the diamond quite as much. You can still see on this obverse side towards the heel. I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but it's just a little bit coarse there. I think the angle on the heel is just off just a smidgen on that side. It's okay. It's not, oh, I just did that off camera, didn't I? It's okay, it kind of, it still kind of tears a bit. There we go. There we go. All right. Great progress. One left. Yeah, we forgot. We did do this one at the beginning. Again, super dull. We're gonna start with the diamond. Luckily, same as the first kitchen knife, as well as the folding hocho chef's knife. This one is a thin blade with a thin stock, so should sharpen up faster. There's less material to remove and just in generally will be slicier. Bit lighter here. Hmm, still not great. We need to reestablish the bevels just a bit here. Much better. And finally to finish it off on the ceramic rods. Very good, and one last stropping. Wipe that off. Nice and razor sharp. All right, that is eight different types of knives sharpened on the rods mostly, I did have to cheat on some of the chipped ones, but I think uh, pretty good. What are, we, what are we at, like in two hours of sharpening? Something like that, two hours, eight knives. <laughs> That's all for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, stay safe, stay sharp.